Hi everyone, welcome to this new piece of video about Git, where I want to show you how easy it is to publish a Git um, um, Nugget library with Git. Now, we have a simple project that contains a stupid log library. It's a project I had from, well, forever. And it is multiple targeted. So it is targeted against .NET 4.6.1 and .NET standard. So I'm going to publish a library that is valid for both full framework and the new core framework. Now, to simplify everything, I want to first address a problem, versioning. I am using Gitflow in this repository, so I can use Git version, and it's a nice tool that is able to calculate the semantic versioning based on the history of my repository. All I have to do is add the dot config folder where I have specified that I'm using the latest version of the .NET Git version tool, and the Git version YAML file where I'm specifying that I'm continuous deployment. Thanks to this, I can now issue a .NET to restore, and this will restore my Git version. So I can run .NET Git version. This is a new command that run Git version, and based on the history of my repository, it is determining a nice versioning for my folder. Step two, I create a build PS1 um, script to build everything. You can look at the repository, the link is in the video. I use uh, build utils PowerShell command of mine for encapsulating some build utils like running the Git version and parsing the JSON output. But the whole file is nothing special. It is just doing a bunch of things. And the important thing that when I run .NET pack to create my Mm, nugget publishing nugget packages i am specifying all the versioning i got from git version okay so that's the important part now i can simply run the file and verify that everything gets okay here is my simple command is build.ps1 and a bunch of um, parameters it's not anything important and i um, I publishing everything in C, temp as publish. If I press enter, it is going to compile, it is going to calculate version, it is going to do everything for me. And in the end, I'm expecting to have everything in that temp folder. Okay, I'm in the test publish folder. Everything is published. As you can see, I have a nice name of the file and it's using semantic versioning for creating my nugget packages. And if I'm opening with 7-zip because it's um, the Nugget package is a simple zip file. I can verify that indeed I have two version. I take the .NET standard, it's the most recent, and I take the property of the file and look at school. I have in the file the full versioning completed by the hash of the commit used. So I can uh, I was able to publish with a single build script a Nugget package that is fully versioned thanks to Git version. Step four. Step four, it's going to the artifact section of my Azure DevOps account. I've created a feed, I've called test feed demo, and I've already published some test log library, but all I need to do is creating the test feed demo and create a pipeline that is able to publish my library to this feed. And this is really simple because everything is done by this um, build PS1 file. So if I want to create a pipeline, it is really simple because I already created, but I show you how simple it is. If you want to look at um, how simple is the pipeline, it, the pipeline just contains a bunch of instructions. So the triggering, the PR, where I want where, where I want this pipeline to run. It is running on an Azure virtual machine that it's given to me by Microsoft. That's the hosted agent, so I don't even need to bother to create an agent. And I'm simply create a pipeline with the first task. I want to be sure to use the latest um, .NET tool to compile .NET Core. 
and the .NET full framework is already present in the Windows latest machine, so I'm not worried about .NET 4.6.1 part of the build. Then I simply tell to run the build file, passing all the parameter, the only particular step is um, I want to everything to go in the build artifact staging directory. It's the standard directory where you should put everything produced by your build. Then I know that the build is gonna run some tests. So I say, okay, you have some test in the format VS test. So upload everything to the build. And that's where the magic happens. This is the index symbol in Azure DevOps task. The, this published symbol will do some sort of magic. It will take all the PDB files that it found in the build and it's gonna to index them in the same server using the Azure artifact. So you don't need to do anything. Everything is done by this simple task and we will see what magic this task will made happen. Then I am install the latest Nugget version. I'm publishing every package that I found in the artifact directory to the published VSDS feed. If you don't know how you can find its address, it's simple, you use show assistance, you use Nugget, you choose the pack, and you choose, oh, sorry, you choose push, and you choose which kind of target feed you use. And once you choose everything, you can press add and it add this nice command pre-populated so you don't even need to um, bother having to remember this. So this is publish the, the library into internal, um, in, into internal artifact and then publish the artifacts. I want to publish everything that's in the artifact directory. That's all. Now, when you modify your code and push, to the repository, a build automatically starts. So the pipeline starts. And since I'm using the hosted agent, I don't need to have anything in my infrastructure. It is going to acquire an agent from the cloud that it's uh, made available by Microsoft and it will start running my script and doing everything I need to publish the Nugget package included the index symbol part that is creating the magic for being able to, um, to debug the source code. Now it is just time to wait for the build to complete. Once the build completed and everything gets okay, you can indeed view that some tests run and everything gets green. And what is important is looking at my um, index symbol. So it is doing something. It is actually indexing something and you don't need to understand what's inside this part. But the nice part, the nice fact is your symbol is gonna be indexed. So everything is all right for debugging source for a real good debugging experience. Now I wanna show you another detail of the build. I've triggered another build just to show what's happening during a pipeline execution. Once it starts, it is acquiring all the tool set needed to build my solution. The important part is I don't need to be sure that the agent has the latest .NET 6 .NET tooling for compiling my code because I've included in the build definition, in the pipeline definition, a task that allow me to ask automatically install the .NET 6 version. So that's cool because I don't need to be worried about which kind of tooling for compiling my solution is present in the build agent. I can always ask the agent to download for me. In this situation, the hosted agent by Microsoft still does not have the latest version of 6 uh, of .NET 6, so it is downloaded, it's extracted, and it's actually running my build file. My new build finished. I'm checking the output, everything is green. If I check the Nugget command, it is telling me that it's publishing um, feed, so you can indeed verify that I've published the alpha 0006 version. I can go to feed demo, refresh, and yes, indeed, I have this um, this new version. So I have 
two version. Now I'm gonna use this package on my Visual Studio solution. So let's go. I've opened Visual Studio 22 and I'm creating a new project. So I wanna create a simple console app and I'm going to store in CTEMP directory, nothing fancy. And I want to use .NET 6. So Visual Studio is gonna create for me this project and it's really simple. But now I need to do a small modification. So inside the console app, I need to set a nugget config file that allows me to specify all the package repositories I want to use in this solution. I have copied a uh, default nugget config so I can open even with Notepad++ because it's simple. It has simply um, the standard um, index JSON of the nugget org. So I need to go on my log library. I need to connect to the feed. I can choose .NET or nugget, but the only thing I need to do is take this path and simply copy to the Nugget JSON and give my as though like so I can identify. Now I have two supported package sources in my solution, and quite often I just need to close and reopen the solution for Visual Studio to be able to find it. So I can close solution and I can reopen again. At this point, I can go to dependencies, right click, manage Nugget packages verify that indeed I have my asdo new package sources. I can go to browse, include pre-release, and I have my log library and I can install. I accept and everything gets green. Now, the only thing that remains for me to do is modifying the code using a class from that library and a simple console read key and Everything is okay. Now, usually when you reference a package, you don't have sources, so the problem is you are not able to debug this code. But if you enable the source server support with the Azure Pipeline, as I showed you before, you can go to symbol and cache location, and I already configured my uh, Azure DevOps account, but you can press this button and it will be prompt with a login. You can log in and choose all the organization you want to be able to use as a source server. Since this is my only organization for this demo, I have simply checked this one. I've changed the symbol cache location and I'll show you um, why I have specified that I will only want to include log library DLL to be a little bit more quick. And then you need to go on the debugging general and change a little bit of default setting. First of all, you need to uncheck enable just my code because it will prevent debugger for loading code that is not your code. Then you need to enable source server support. If not enabled, it, it, it will not check the source server support. You need to also enable source link support and I suggest you to choose the fallback to give credential manager authentication. It is gonna be more stable. Once this kind of uh, setting are in place, you can press okay. You can put a breakpoint on the point of your code where you are actually loading one external class defined in the nugget package and press F5. Once the debugger hit the breakpoint, you should check the output and you should verify that indeed you loaded the symbol for the log library. That's because you specified that Azure organization as a source server. You configure the build to index all the PDB on that server. So Visual Studio is able to get the symbol for log library. And so I can press F11 to just go and debug the file it will need the moment because as you see the debugger, it's actually looking for the code and look how cool it is. That's the original version of the file used to compile the DLL. And if you look at the location, if you open the containing folder, you see that it's not in your any source, it's source server, TFS commit, a commit and log library. 
That's because Visual Studio checked the DLL. The DLL has a unique index. That unique index is used to download the PDB file from the source server. And in that PDB files, there are correct and exact information to locate the file in the same Azure DevOps organization. Now, even if people change the original code, push other modification to the log library, that version of the DLL will always grab the exact version of the file used to compile that version of the DLL. So you are able to debug as if the log library is in your solution. If you wonder how this is possible, you can go to the C symbol cache in the in the path where you configure your symbol cache to be lo located. You see there's log library PDB. You see there are different version of the log library. You can edit the PDB file with a notepad. Yes, it's binary, but it's not important because there's a nice section that is textual and that's cool. So the index, the index source file action in the Azure pipeline actually write, actually wrote those section. It is specifying that that is the original path of the file in the build server. So that it's not existing on my disk. I have no D disk on my disk. So, you know, not having a D disk means that this path is invalid. And if you do not enable source server support, what you got in Visual Studio when you press F11 was a nice, but not so nice dialog box telling you, I'm not, find, I'm not finding the console log destination.cs file in your source, in, in your disk. But since this PDB was enriched with this information, this allow the Visual Studio to understand that he knows which TFS collection, which team project, which repo commit, which TFS short commit, and that's the path inside the repository. So instead of looking in your local disk, Visual Studio is able to contact the server and ask the exact version in the exact commit so it is able to debug the exact version. I know it seems like magic, but everything it was obtaining, just creating an Azure DevOps pipeline and adding a single task index source, nothing more in everything, it's okay. Thanks for watching, I'll wait you for the next video.